Hi, this is Larry with Man Cave Mayhem. Today it's a chilly day in Southern California. I'm out in the garage and uh, I just wanted to, this isn't really a how-to video, but I wanted to show you what I did to my 2024 Ford F-150, show you how I did it and why I did it, tell you a little bit about why I did it. Anyhow, I got, I installed a DC to DC power converter in the Ford F-150 to charge my solar generator. I have a uh, EcoFlow Delta II. Actually picked that up for a really good price during a Christmas sale. And I actually bought two of them because they were so stupid cheap. So anyhow, and they're still, they still marked down quite a bit. So you guys might want to check that out. I'll leave that in the link in the description. So long story short, I've watched a few videos. A lot of the overlanders are switching over to this method of charging. It basically fakes out these solar generators, making them think they're receiving a charge from solar. And um, I purchased a Victron unit to install in the truck. The problem I ran into was trying to charge it on the 400 watt uh, power inverter that's in the truck already. Is uh, It's not a pure sign power inverter, so the thing just sat there and clicked, which I've watched in a lot of other videos happen to other people. So I, I'm not a big overlander. I, we do camp. Uh, I pull a little travel, a little teardrop, teardrop trailer, and we spend a lot of time at the beach and stuff camping. So during these camp, uh, camp outs, we end up staying in the trailer for over a month and we go from campsite to campsite quite a bit. So while I'm driving to these different campsites, I wanted a way to charge these uh, solar generators that I have. And I figured that would be great in the back of the truck. I'm also gonna be working on a video where I install one of these in my uh, Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. So stay tuned to, for that. Again, this is not a how-to video. This is actually just, I'm gonna just kind of show you what I did video and uh, you guys can go from there. There's plenty of videos on the internet. I chose a less invasive way of doing this because I didn't want to cut into my dash or really cut into the, anything. The only thing I went through was a grommet under the body. And um, so that's a good thing. That worked out pretty good. Uh, and I ran my uh, power cable through that grommet and up through where the actual power inverter is. I also tapped into a wire that was a switch wire on the power inverter to get my on and off switch on uh, the device itself. So we'll get started in this video. We'll go ahead and uh, do it. I ran number six gauge wire. Uh, you can run thicker wire if you want. This works fine though. It doesn't seem to get hot or anything, so not a bad deal. Uh, the run on my truck, running it uh, to the back, I ran it from the battery down the outside of the frame. So I didn't go through the firewall, ran it down the outside of the frame on the other side and up underneath in, uh, in a little oval grommet that uh, goes up right into the cab, the rear cab section right under the seat of the truck, which worked out perfectly. So anyhow, if you haven't yet, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Check us out at Instagram at mancave underscore mayhem. Now let's get on with the video. All right, these are what I used to make the connections. This was fairly affordable on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description for this uh, crimper. Just hit it with a hammer and you've got all these connections with insulator, string crap connections, and also just the rubber boots that went over the end to protect it from shorting out. So those are all gonna be in the link in my description below. Also, I picked uh, this stuff up at Harbor Freight, um, and you know this was used to route the wire along the frame, and then this is just used to cover the wire up just to kind of camouflage it, make it look nice and protect it a little bit. All right, just so you can see how I routed this on a Ford F-150. This is a 2024 Ford F-150. I've got a six gauge wire coming from the battery, and it goes to, a and this is the fuse right here it's just a stereo type fuse um i chose this fuse i'm not sure how many amp that fuse is i think it's a 60 amp fuse but i chose that fuse because um i did have a breaker but i didn't really have any place i wanted to mount the breaker so i just used that fuse so that could be temporary i may end up putting a breaker in later or another 
different style of fuse, but for now that's what I'm using. So it'll run through a fuse. And then I actually have it not running through the firewall. I have it running under the truck. And I, I found this to be the least invasive way of doing it. And you can see this cable right here. Okay, so I took the wire housing holder or whatever you want to call it, this, and I took a bolt with a lock washer on it and a nut. And then if, if you look at the way the Ford frames are, all right, you're gonna run across holes on the passenger side that are similar to this, but not exactly like this. They have a deeper slot in them. So I just took that bolt and ran it into that slot and then bolted it down. So I didn't have to drill into the frame or anything. But like I said, this is not the exact way it is on the other side. On the passenger side, it goes much deeper. This is a 2024 Ford F-150. May be different on others, but see, that'll just latch in when you tighten it down, it holds in place. So that's how I attached it on the other side of the frame. I housed it in plastic, ran it under, and there's a grommet that goes under the seat, which is located right here. And you can see that. You can see where the where I fed the, the wire in right there. Eventually, I'll probably put a little silicone around that too to seal it up better. And I'll show you this. Comes up the, into the cab of the truck, right under the existing power inverter, which is modified sine wave. That's why you can't use that. And it runs over and there's the cable right there. So now I'll, I'll move over to the mounting bracket and show you how I'm going to mount it. Okay, now I'm on the driver's side. And this is a mounting bracket that I made. I, I wanted it to, I, I know these things run a little hot, so I wanted to keep it up off the carpet. And I think I'm going to drill some holes in this. It's just a chunk of aluminum that I had. So scrap piece of aluminum. So I'm going to drill some holes on this to help ventilate it. And I'll clean this up a little bit. It's kind of crude. But that's gonna go right here. I'll show you how I did this. Now that's the seat bolt right there. So that's gonna bolt to the seat bolt right here. Let me get it set in here the way it's gonna be. All right. So that's gonna sit in there. And then the power station will do be something like this and it'll set on that, which should work really well. Uh, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna punch some more holes in this just to give it a little more ventilation, but I think this aluminum will help dissipate some heat. Uh, worst case scenario, I can run with the seat up, but I don't think I will need to. There's plenty of air movement under here with that fan and stuff, it should be fine. But we'll, we'll test it and see. I think it'll work fine. Okay, so what I've done here is I added some holes underneath the unit just to allow for a little more air movements whether that's going to help or not i don't know but i'm paranoid so i figured it would be good to have something under there so i did that we're going to go ahead and mount that i'm going to clean this all up make it look a little prettier and then uh, i'll show you the rest of the steps i'm this is not really a how-to video this is just kind of showing you what i'm doing this is not going to be an overlanding rig sorry about all my junk but this is not going to be an overlanding rig it's it's a camping rig but I want to be able to go from campsite to campsite and charge my power stations. So I've, you know, watched a lot of videos on how to do this. So I thought I would do it on my F-150 and show you guys how I did it. So that's how this is going to mount. That's why I have the holes drilled underneath just to give it a little bit more ventilation. It's going to be up off the carpet a little bit. They say these tend to run a little hot. So I'm going to see how that works because it's under the seat. All right, this is how I've got it hooked up. I've, you know, got my little notes on here. Do not block because of heat, uh, DC, DC, DC converter charger for solar generator, just in case anybody's wondering. <laughs> so anyhow, I got this all hooked up, it's ready to go. I gotta hook the ground up to this bolt right here, which will be right down here. And I'm mounting this, mounting it right there, so. That's the way it's going to sit in the truck. I'll show you how it looks when it's in. All right, so this is how the unit looks installed. Opposite end, 
my power inverters over there, which is not a pure sign inverter I found out. That's why I'm installing this. And uh, this is where this is gonna sit. Um, the only other thing I need to do is hook up the switch, which is gonna be somewhat challenging. I'm trying to find a switch taut without running a wire 900 feet. So we're gonna try that next. All right, this is the final attachment. I went ahead and ran a switch right here. It's on a switch hot that I ran from the power inverter over, but I put a switch here and set up on the dash. I just didn't want to drill a hole in my dash. Um, so I can always get out and shut it off if I need to, but I don't think that's a real critical thing. Anyhow, the only other thing I need to do is put some wrap on that wire to kind of clean it up a little bit, but other than that, it's done. We're going to give her a test now. All right, I've got my EcoFlow Delta II plugged in. We're going to turn it around. I'm going to start the truck, and we'll fire this thing up and see if she works. All right, I lost sound here, so I'll kind of give you a play-by-play. -play. I've got this all plugged in and ready to go for its first test. I've got the truck running, and uh, now I'll be switching on the uh, DC to DC converter. And uh, here we go. It's going to show on the display that it take. There's a little lag, but it'll show on the display what we're, uh, how much voltage is going into that or, or how many watts is going into it. So now it's booted up. It recognizes that there's power going in. And there we go. We got 427 watts going into the uh, EcoFlow Delta II uh, solar charger and so basically what you're doing is you're faking this out and making it think that it's charging from a solar panel so this works really well i'm real happy with the install and uh here i'm running my mouth like i usually do i don't know uh, what i'm saying there but anyhow that's kind of the extent of how i did the install on this thing this is the fully installed unit as you can see i've got the switch on the mounting bracket that I made simply because I didn't want to run anything on in my dash. So that's kind of how it looks. It's final finished product. All right, that's going to about wrap it up for this video, folks. If you haven't yet, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Check us out at Instagram at mancave underscore mayhem. Check out my affiliate link through Amazon. All these items that are in the truck right now will be listed in my affiliate link. And just remember, folks, I'm just a man in the cave causing mayhem. Thanks again for watching.